Hey there! In this power-up, I will be showing you how to create a form using Composer Pro. We will be going through building a form, binding data to the fields, form validation, and creating records based on the field inputs. The resulting form will be used to enter student names and email addresses, and we'll also get a list of students displaying their names and emails. Starting from the beginning, I have already created a data resource for the students. The schema consists of name, email address, and an ID. Going back to the interface builder, let's build our form. Let's add an input field for the name of the student and let's label it name. Then let's add another input field for email address. Now we have inputs for all the data we need about the students, so let's add an add student button, which will eventually create the record of a student when pressed. Now we need a variable to temporarily store the data about the new student. The variable will be used to pass the data to our backend to create a permanent record of a student. We have two options, using a data variable or a page variable. When using a data variable, we create a data record of a new type. The advantage with data variables is that it automatically has the same schema as the data resource we defined in the beginning. This is especially useful in cases where the schema consists of many complex properties. We can then pass the whole data variable to the backend to create the permanent record. When using a page variable, we would have to manually create the same schema as our data resource. In other aspects, the page variable works similar to the data variable. In the end, it is mostly up to your own preference to choose which type of variable to use. In this case, I'll use a data variable. Let's create a data variable of a new type and name it new student. That's all it takes. Going back to the view canvas, we can now bind the values of the input fields to the data variable's properties. Clicking on the value property of the input field, let's bind it to data and variables, choose data variable, and bind it to the name property of our variable new student. Let's do the same for the email input. Now we have bound all necessary student data to our variable, and we can use it to create a new student record to our data resource. Let's define the logic for that to our button. Opening the logic canvas, we can find the create record flow function in the library to the left. Let's drag it to the canvas and connect it to the component tab event. Looking at the properties for the create record flow function, we can define to which resource the record gets created and the record properties. Student is automatically chosen, so let's change the binding of the record property to the data variable new student. Now when the button is tapped, a new student will be created into our data resource based on the information in our input fields. However, we'll want the input fields to clear after creating the student. After creating the record, we'll need to clear the data in our new student data variable. Let's add a set data variable flow function to our logic canvas and define the new student data variable as an empty object. As the property values are emptied after the record creation, also our input fields that were bound to these properties become empty. In our form, we would like to validate the inputs and make sure both name and emails are filled out before the student record gets created. We can do this in the logic canvas for the button. Before the record gets created, we should check if the fields are valid. Let's add an if flow function to check our data variable property values. The simplest validation would be adding the following formula to the condition of the if flow function. This checks if either of the properties is empty. If the condition evaluates as true, we can add an alert flow function to notify the user to fill in both fields. If both inputs are filled and this condition evaluates as false, we can go ahead and create the student record. Let's add the alert flow function to the logic canvas. You can customize this flow however you like. You can add multiple if flow functions to check properties separately and alert the user with more specific information about the error, such as student name cannot be empty. Or you might check in the student's resource if the email already exists, minimizing the risk for duplicate inputs. To demonstrate our results, let's add a list of our students into our app. First, we'll need to get access to our data resource students, so let's create a collection of records type data variable. Then, let's add a repeating paragraph to our page. and bind its content to students' names and email addresses.
Now each student that we create shows in our list. And leaving the student name or email empty leads to an alert of the error. I hope you enjoyed this power-up and let's meet again soon.